Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're going to be ranking all of my Wet n Wild palettes. I actually have a lot. Let me, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 11 palettes from Wet n Wild currently, and I'm going to be ranking them from my least favorite to my favorite. Like the rest of the videos I've done in this series so far, I've already pre-ranked the palettes to make this a little bit easier. And I'm going to be talking about each one. I'll probably be linking a few videos up in the card because I did do like a good review roundup video so I'm gonna be referencing that a little bit but let's go ahead and jump in because Wet n Wild is one of my favorite affordable brands but they're very hit or miss very hit or miss so like there are some palettes in here that I think are amazing I think you really need to try out and then there are some where I, I want to just like sp spiral frisbee them into oblivion I never want to see them again <laughs> all right so uh, my least favorite these two really could be interchanged. It, they both, I'm gonna say this, they both kind of suck equally. <laughs> but the first palette in my least favorite from Wet n Wild is from their limited edition uh, Rebel Rose collection, which broke my heart because I love the original Wet n Wild Rebel Rose lipstick. <laughs> and so when they came out with this entire like goth, black rose, Rebel Rose like collection I like lost my damn mind it was amazing <laughs> um and I saw these quads there were more than this these two but these are the only two that I was actually interested in picking up the first one the one that I really didn't like is called bed of roses this one I don't even think I could get a nice workable look out of this the other quad uh, house of thorns comes in just slightly above because at least I got it took way too long a lot of effort a lot of fallout <laughs> a lot of time but I did actually get like a look out of this and even though I didn't like it I actually did get a compliment in public from this one but this one I didn't even want to go outside they're patchy they're not really that pigmented they're ugh. and I love the packaging I love the imprints of the roses in here and just uh, just I did mention with House of Thorns that uh, I did get a compliment in public on this. If you want to see the look I did, I did do a spotlight on petite palettes with this palette and I show you the look that I did. I went to a Starbucks and the barista was really nice to me and she goes, oh my god, I love your makeup, you know, do you, she actually were asked me if I worked at Sephora because she liked my makeup and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Yeah, so it, it's just too much work. Not enough pigment. It was too much work. I know Wet n Wild can do better, S even with their limited edition stuff. So this was just a like a huge disappointment. Probably the biggest, one of the biggest, if not the biggest disappointment of 2019. All right, the next palette I'm going to be talking about is from their limited edition. I believe they were limited edition, uh, the Halloween collection from 2019. They came out with four of these 10 pan palettes. Two were really good and they're a little bit later on in this list and two of them were absolute trash. The first one I'm talking about is called In the Smoke and it's this red and black kind of palette. The pigment is atrocious. The... Ugh, there's way too many shimmers in this. There's only like four or five mattes in here and the shimmers aren't that great. Even using a glitter glue, I think with most Wet n Wild shadows, you do need to use a glitter glue. I'm wearing one on my, I'm wearing all Wet n Wild on my eyes today, but the shimmer I'm wearing on my lid is gorgeous and pigmented, and the glitter glue just helps it stay on my uh, hooded lids all day, but also really makes it pop. Nothing worked with these. No amount of glitter glue and like hope would make these look good it just oh, I was so disappointed because I wanted to have like a nice smoky red palette but this just missed the mark the next palette is another one from the Halloween 10 pan palette collection and this one's called wizards in training this was the blue purple kind of palette and again it just really missed the mark mainly shimmers and again the shimmers really didn't do much other than this beautiful like uh, see like okay so I just put my finger in there and it's a beautiful shade in the pan and if I build it up it looks nice but like look at the payoff there's like nothing <laughs> so if you want to work with these it's it's work that's the thing you have to keep building them up you have to use like fix plus and glitter glue and even then like after all the work that you put in it doesn't look good and there's definitely better from wet and wild so like this is the last like absolute 
garbage palette <laughs> that I never really want to see again. And I know you guys are going to be like, well, Monica, why don't you just declutter them? I am going to declutter them. But first, I wanted to do this video ranking all the Wet n Wild palettes I had tried recently. And I also want to do another declutter week. So I am going to go through and declutter all of my eyeshadow palettes. I'd rather have them all together, all in one spot, so I can go through all of them and declutter. So that's going to be coming up probably not until like February because I need the time to actually go through all of them. But there will be a big declutter coming up. Okay, so the next few palettes we're going to be talking about are kind of mid of the road. They're not terrible, but they're not my favorite. And the first one is part of their permanent collection. And this is technically a reformulation of one of their like best selling original palettes. And this was a palette that was around when I first joined and started watching YouTube back in like 2014, 2015. And like everyone and their mother had this palette and they loved it. This is the <laughs> comfort zone palette. So the original palette, I'll throw a picture up somewhere of what the original palette looked like and they reformulated it when they came out with this new 10 pan packaging the formula of this amazing when they when they're sticking to their original formula in this packaging it's gorgeous the only reason it's this far down on the list is because i don't really like the color story here i feel like it was way too shimmer heavy every shadow is a shimmer except for the top and bottom it's not what i would really reach for it's just like meh you know, uh, the shades are beautiful. Everything blends out. It is pigmented, but this isn't a color story that I'm really drawn to. And I will say I did get it because I was sucked in by all the hype back in the day of everyone who had the original comfort zone palette and they raved about it and talked about how much they loved the formula. So if you're a fan of that original palette, I don't know how you would feel about this one because I never, I think I had the original palette for like a little bit, but I liked this one better. All right, next we have a palette from another recent kind of limited edition collection, and this is the Pac-Man Game Over palette. The reason it's this far down, I love the mattes in here. I'm actually wearing the yellow. I mixed it with another yellow from another palette, but I like the mattes in this palette. They're not the most pigmented. You do have to build them up, but they're workable, and I do like them. The reason it's this far down is because I don't understand this row. I don't think this row should have been in the palette. Not only are these two shimmers garbage, I'm actually wearing this as an inner corner highlight, and that's the only way I can wear it. Even with the glitter glue, this does not look good on the lid. It just doesn't. The only way it looks decent is as an inner corner highlight, so that's why I'm wearing it today. Um, this orange shadow, it's just... It's a shimmer, but it's it's trash. <laughs> There's like barely any pigment to it, and I really don't like it. Uh, and then on top of that, this is kind of like an orangey brown shade. It doesn't fit in with the rest of this palette. Like this row looks so out of place. I kind of wish they had just gone for it and done a full color, colorful palette. You know, because this doesn't make any sense. So like I'm cutting out a third of the palette, which even though I like these other shades a lot, it's a whole third of the palette that's really not usable. And that's why it's so far down on this list. Or like in the middle of this list. We're down to the top five. I can count. Yes, top five palettes. So these are all palettes that are actually pretty good. And I would recommend palettes from here on out to the rest of the list. This is another palette from their permanent collection, their 10 pan palettes. And this is the Stop Playing Safe. So when they originally started coming out with these 10 pan palettes, people were talking about how they were designed to be dupes. And you can definitely see that. So I believe this was originally supposed to be like a dupe for the Natasha Denona. I think it's a Tropic palette. It looks very similar to that. But I will say the formula of this is amazing. The colors are pigmented. They blend like a dream. And this shimmer shade right here, uh, I don't like the way they number them. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but I'm going to point to it. This one right here is gorgeous. I would have put it all over my lids today, but it's just a little bit too light to use with all this yellow. I really wanted to go for like a nice gold on the lid. But... Oh, I love this palette and that shimmer shade is enough that I keep pulling it out specifically for that shimmer shade. So if you can find this, it's affordable. All of these 10 pan palettes, unless you find them on sale, they're $4.99 each, would really recommend. And if you like color, I would say pick this palette up. It's pretty nice. Next we have one of the palettes from the Halloween collection that actually surprised me and in a very good way. This is the Boo Crew and it's the blue and black palette. And I was a bit scared for this because I did hear ahead of time that people had tried this out and really didn't like it. But I am happy to report <laughs> that not only are all the shades really pigmented and it's a really gorgeous just color story and palette, but the matte black in here is the best matte black I have seen in any other Wet n Wild palette ever. 
amazing. So if you're looking for a good affordable matte black, definitely find this if you can. I know they're a limited edition, but I think you can still find them maybe on their website because I know there's stuff that was limited edition, like the Rebel Rose collection was over a year ago, I think, and that's still on their website. So check their website out because this one is 100% worth it, especially if you like blues and especially if you like matte blacks. So this next palette is a bit controversial. Or so, or so it was. This is their first huge palette. This is the Wet n Wild. I think it's just called the 40 palette. I did do a first impression and giveaway with this palette. I'll link that up in the cards if you missed it. But since then, I have continued to use it and test it out. I am wearing a couple of shades from this on my eyes today. I used this yellow shade, the matte one down here. I used this gold shade with a little bit of... Uh, Eve, with a little bit of NYX glitter glue all over my lid and then for my lower lash line I did add just a little bit of the oranges over here. I will say this is actually a really good palette. I really enjoy it and I do think it's a lot, it's a better alternative to Morphe because I really don't want to promote Morphe. I really don't want to reach for Morphe or use Morphe, especially James Charles who's just like trying to censor myself. I didn't want to be mean, but like, he's a bitch. <laughs> Don't buy any of his stuff. He's a terrible person. Uh, definitely go for this instead. <laughs> I really like this palette. Um, the mattes are really, really nice. They blend out really nicely, but the shimmers, you are going to need a glitter glue. That is just something. It's not unique to Wet n Wild that you need a glitter glue with it. I need a glitter glue with my Natasha Denona shimmers. The only formula that I really like without a glitter glue and I can just apply with my fingers is the ABH shimmer formula. That actually lasts all day and works really well on my lids. But Natasha Nona, Wet n Wild, some other brands, they do need a glitter glue. So if you use a glitter glue, the shimmers actually look really, really nice and they stay all day. So yeah, I do think this was worth it. It's a bit pricier than their other palettes, but I do think even though it's huge, look how big it is compared to my head, I think this was worth it. And I really like that Wet n Wild stepped out of their comfort zone. It did something a bit different. All right, so we're down to my top two favorite Wet n Wild palettes, and they're neutral palettes, which surprised me a bit, because I'm definitely more of a green shadow, colorful shadow kind of gal, but the best palettes I found from Wet n Wild are some of their neutral palettes, or the neutral warm palettes. So palette number two is from the Halloween collection that came out this past Halloween and this is called Coffin Break and this is a beautiful warm smoky-ish palette. It is gorgeous. The shades are beautiful. I did use a little bit of these deeper golds just on my outer V today to deepen up a little bit but I really wanted to stick to more of a yellow goldy kind of look um, but they work together nicely just to build up a little bit on the outer corner. You can get so many nice gorgeous looks out of this. The shimmers are gorgeous. Um, the matte black is not as good as the Boo Crew. This would be a perfect palette if I had that matte black in here, but it is a really good palette. Uh, this is the limited edition Halloween palette, so if you can find this, this one and the blue green, the Boo Crew palette, would highly recommend, especially now they're probably on sale. I got... Um, I don't think it was this one. I got the Boo Crew on sale for $2.99 at Walgreens right after Halloween definitely worth it if you can get that one. All right, and last, but certainly not least, we have my favorite Wet n Wild palette. And this one, when it came out, was originally, like I said before, considered to be a dupe for another palette. This time it was an ABH palette. So this one is called My Glamour Squad. And I believe this was supposed to be a dupe for the ABH Soft Glam palette. Let me go get it to compare. You see it? So yes, definitely similar color stories and definitely could be interpreted as a dupe. I will say I love every shadow in here. The matte black is really good, but not as good as the Boo Crew matte black. I want that matte black to be in every Wet n Wild palette, I swear. <laughs> but this is such a good palette. And I do get very similar looks. I should do a side-by-side -side video, but I felt like it was a bit old and played out because quite a few people did do side-by-side -side videos. But every look that I would want to get after Soft Glam, I can get with this one. So it is a really good dupe. Would recommend considering you can still get this for $4.99. This is part of their permanent 10 pan collection and I rarely reach for this palette. <laughs> I reach for this one over my ABH one. Let's put it there. And that's after spending a year panning an ABH palette. I still I still like this palette. It's such it's such a good palette. They're pigmented, they're beautiful. This I feel like is one of the only palettes that has a good mixture of mattes to shimmers because I think they were basing it on the ABH palette. So you've got four shimmers and then the rest of the palette is matte. So I do think that's a really good ratio and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful, 
palette. So there we have it, all of my Wet n Wild palettes ranked favorite to least favorite, least favorite to favorite. Let me know down below what your favorite Wet n Wild palettes are and if you want to pick up any more after this video. Thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye!